Hi, this is Lisa and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to take this little model, we're gonna prep him, get him on his stand, get him primed and base coated. So before we start working on Sal, let's take a quick look at some photographs of some chestnut horses because we're painting him chestnut with some white on him after. But first, we're gonna look at chestnut. In the last video, we talked about having three colors, a main color, a highlight, and a shadow. So we don't really know where to put those. So let's, if we look at some real horses, and I've got a bunch of pictures of real chestnuts here. If you do some research, you'll look at the shadow on the ground and you can see which way the light's coming from. So this is coming, the light is coming from the right. So you can see how he lights up in certain areas and how he's in shadow in other areas. I zoom this in closer and you can see how the light really pops and really makes him look real. He is real, but this can also work with a model. So take a good look and do your research before you start painting. Here are a couple more well-lit chestnuts. You get the nice dark coloring on the top with this one. And here, got some really interesting light and shadows. Another one with less bright light, but you can still see the darker up here, the bright around here. And this last one is not well lit. He is in a probably very cloudy day, but you can still see the soft shadows and light. So make sure you have a look at quite a few and learn how the shadows, where they go and where the light goes. Now here's a horse that's clipped and you can notice here, all of a sudden the light and shadow is much more uh, subdued. Same as if you have a furry one, the light refracts in different ways and you don't get the same shadows and light. So really look at your uh, intended model. Another thing you should do is look at work by good artists. And here is one by Mindy Berg. It's one of the one that I own. And you can see how she on this model has put in the shadows and put on the highlights. And he really pops. So before painting your model, what I would suggest is take a photo. And here is the camera. This is the light right here. And I'm shining the light this direction. I then crop that photo and turn it in to a black and white in the grayscales. And now you can see on him how the light is affecting him. And this is a really good tool when you're shading your specific model. So I printed out the picture of my little mini with in black and white so I can see where the shadows and the highlights can go just as a reference for my painting. Now let's prep him. First thing you should do is if you have any sprues or anything really sticking out, use this little frame cutter or similar, and you'll be trimming off anything sticking out. This guy does not have anything, but that would be the first thing. So if you have any big sprues or whatever, trim them off. Once you have those trimmed off with the files, gently file any seam lines or anything sticking out. Now it really helps to have a magnifying glass when working on this so you have a close-up. What I had is I had these custom made for me for close-ups. So when I was talking to the doctor, I asked him for something that I could hold just a few inches from my face and basically acts almost like a magnifying glass. And these things are amazing. And little fine files will get into places that are hard to reach. Just be very careful when you're doing this because not much normally has to come off. And go over the entire model and you can use a flat file or a round file, but just very gently depending on what it is you're taking off. Once that is done, I've got some very fine grain sandpaper here. And then I'm going to just, again, sand where the seam lines are. And go back and forth if you find anything and work those out until you can't see any more. You'll find little pieces like I have right there between the legs. So hard to do because you don't want to sand anything that should be there. You just want to get that one little piece. So work carefully, slowly, and don't push too hard or you're going to lose pieces of the sculpture detail. This is where these things come in really helpful. 
it just takes the tiniest little piece off there. If you have any holes you need to fill, you use this plastic putty or there's some brush on liquid one. This is a marble dust actually, and it's very super fine. So if you had a little hole, just put a tiny bit on there, and brush it off. This sculpt is very clean. Using a brush, a clean brush, also helps you feel if there's any lumps or bumps in places that's harder to see. Now, before I put him on his stand, I'm gonna put a light coat of primer, and I'm just putting some in my wet palette, on the detailed areas, just to make sure there's nothing I have to clean up further. Now, make sure you're using a good quality miniature primer and not the spray-on type we usually use for traditionals. I'm not sure if I mentioned in the video or not in the other video, but you have to wash him first too, with some soapy water, just to make sure the uh, molding stuff is off. And you want to make sure you have a very fine coat of your first primer. And this stuff will self-level, don't worry about it. But don't leave it on in too thick like I have here. Brush off the thickness. You're going to be doing more than one coat of primer. Make sure when you're doing this you're not leaving any hairs on the piece. Make sure you pull those off right away if you do and that you're not obscuring any detail. This first layer does not cover amazingly well, but it does give it a bite for your next layer. And then once I'm happy with it, I'm gonna let that dry. You can also airbrush this on. However, I'm not going to cover airbrushing as I find it difficult for me myself. I can airbrush larger ones, but these little ones are hard. That's up to you. So now we're going to need to attach it to a base. We're going to look at some of these models. Now if we have tiny little feet, like in this one, or the one I'm working on, you wouldn't want to put a pin up through those feet. However, in a slightly larger one like this, this pins fantastic up the feet, so I would be putting the drill hole right there. With something like this, I may actually use the tail as the uh, pin hole. Or for the little guy we're working on, I think I'm going to use his belly. If your piece has a stand, then we have a special holders for that. They just open up and hold the stand, which are really neat. And the first thing we need is something to use as a pin. You could use a T-pin or a paper clip or a piece of coat hanger wire. The point is it's got to be something fairly sturdy and the paper clips are. Next, you're gonna to have to have a pin vise and find a drill bit about the same size as your wire. Touch your drill far enough down so that it's not sticking up like here. You want it as low as possible and that'll put less stress on the drill. Then if you haven't used this yet before and I have one in there, you are going to drill a hole into your stand. my wire just sitting in there for now and I'm going to hold my little model up there and decide how high I want him to be and that'll give me an idea of how much pin I'm going to need. So with wires I'm going to, or with wire cutters I'm going to cut that off close to the size to start and I want to have the straightest point of the wire and then whatever's left over. So maybe this much. See. Up there, a little shorter, and I'm going to take, this is the bent end, I'm going to cut that off. Next, I'm going to take my little model, and the way I want him there, and put a pin in there. Where I'm going to put the pin, I'm going to carefully drill a hole there. Take your time. And just push down slightly with the drill, not too much or it might break. And depending on what you're drilling in, you can go deeper or less deep. And I'm going to check that with a pin. Now take a little bit of crazy glue 
and stick the pin in. And wipe off any extra crazy glue. Next, I'm gonna put a little crazy glue on my stand and stick the pin in there and let that dry. Okay, so we've crazy glued some wire into there. How do I get it out? What you're gonna do is just hold this with pliers and unscrew it and it will come off. It may require a few turns, but if you hold this steady, your model will easily unscrew. Now that he's up on blocks, I am going to go in and apply another coat of my primer. For this second coat, I switched to a better brush and I'm trying to do more longer, smoother strokes so that I'm not leaving a lot of brush strokes here. Make sure when you do this, if any little lumps or bumps form, to get rid of those right away before it dries. Now I've given Sal plenty of time to dry. And if you have any bumps, there's a tiny little bump right there. So what I'm gonna do is take some very fine sandpaper. It's wet, dry sandpaper. I'm gonna dampen it a little. And I'm just gonna lightly make sure I remove that bump. Now that I've got him primed, I am gonna bring out my paint mixing set. I have the paints I'm gonna use. Notice none of them are brown, as per the other videos. I have my wet palette here, and I am going to start mixing this color. Now, I cannot print out, I tried printing out the colors for matching here, but they don't print out properly, so I'm gonna to have to use my computer screen as reference to see when I get the color close. So you can see I have my color reference here. And if I look here, these are colors are all from the medieval set. And I have no magenta, but magenta is just the mix of the red and the blue. So first I'm gonna mix some magenta. So based on my formulas, that's what I have right there. And I'm gonna start mixing the magenta and then slowly add in the other colors. And as I do it, I'm gonna compare it to what I have on the computer screen. Now, as I'm mixing, I found the first mix was better for shadow color, and I thought it needed a little bit more yellow and red. So I'm just adding a little bit at a time, trying to get the right tone, and each time I'm comparing it up to the screen and building it. So if I got the color, I can then put it onto a piece of paper like that and hold it up to my horse to see how close we're getting. Now when I was mixing these, I started off and just added a little bit more of this. I thought, well, maybe it's not orange enough. So I added a little bit more yellow, added more, a little, a little bit more red. So here are my three colors I've mixed. And if you take that up to the computer, look at that. you can see it's quite close to the top three colors. Now, if you keep the lid on this, put it in the fridge between work, those colors are there to stay. Now, when you're painting, you wanna get paint on just the bristle portion. You don't want any water or paint getting up here, or it'll drip. So when you take your paint, roll it in there on the brush, and then with your model, take long strokes in the direction of the hair. And I'm going to do one thin coat over the entire model. And then I'm going to check the color and see if I like it. And if not, I will change it a tiny bit for the second coat. You can add a little bit of water to the paint to make sure it's thin enough. You want to make sure this goes on thin. Long strokes. So there's Sal's first coat and I'm going to let him dry before I compare the color. Now this is my model and this is the color I want and I'm going to take my little Sal and look and I can see his color is a little too greeny, maybe a little more red and yellow in the next paint. I'm just going to put a little bit more and try it again for a second coat. 
I mixed in some more yellow and red. And there's the difference in color between the two. And then I'm gonna compare that on the screen. This paint is made to cover in two coats and you can see how nicely now this is coating. And because of the quality of the paint, it self levels very nicely. Still, don't be choppy when you're painting, be smooth. So make sure they dry well between coats. And during that time, I make sure I clean my brush properly and I put my paint in the fridge fully sealed so it keeps it fresh. Now, as I look at him again, I think he needs a little more red just to get going. So I'm gonna mix one more, do one more coat with a little more red in it. Now I believe that's my fourth coat and I'm quite happy with that tone now. I also have my other two colors to go with that for highlights and shades ready to go once he's fully dry. So I now have a base coated cell and you'd think this is four different models, but it's exactly the same model. This photo was taken at night this one was taken in the morning. See, this one has the light coming from behind it. This one has the light coming at it. This one was taken outside in the sunshine. And this was taken up against a uh, light background. This is actually the closest to the real color. Now, it's not exactly the color I wanted, and I can keep tweaking if I wanted, but I'm actually very happy with this tone, and I'm going to move on from there. Just out of interest though, when you're taking photos, changing the light really affects what people see.